right, welcome back to the 24, actually 28-hour Money Bomb for 2015. I'm David Knight. I'll be your host this hour along with Gerald Salenti, my guest. Of course, later in the evening, we're going to be covering live with analysis and commentary the presidential uh, debates, if you can call them that. I think that's giving them more respect than they actually deserve. We're going to talk to Gerald Salenti about how that's not really the important issue. What's really the important issue, and I want to talk to Gerald about this, is what he's got coming up, Occupy Peace. I've said many times, we need to stop being distracted by these celebrity big brother shows that they put on for us every four years. We get to elect another dictator, and that, of course, is what this is. It's a reality TV show. We need to stop being distracted by that, and we need to get involved issue by issue on the things that matter. No matter how much you agree with a candidate, you're going to find there's many issues on which you disagree with him, but you're not going to be carried to a state of liberty and peace by these people. You just aren't. Look at the articles that came out today. We've got the DOD admitting that U.S. Special Forces boots are now on the ground in Syria. Admitting it, finally. We've been telling you this for years. This is where they've been going. And, of course, earlier this week, we had Vladimir Putin saying, you know, we're going to have to put Russian troops in Syria to stop this. We're already there. We're not waiting. The U.S. is already there. And, of course, we have started this. I just got back from vacation. I was out in the Pacific Northwest. We went out to look at the redwoods and uh, the beautiful waterfalls and mountains that are in Oregon, Washington. Of course, we saw some of the effects of the wildfires that have now uh, spread. Uh, it looked like earlier this week they were actually going to go to some of the same forests that we were able to see. We were horrified to see that. They have now contained this with the help of volunteers working locally against this. It's, it's, inter it's amazing when you look at the massive destruction that was there. A couple of days ago, at that point, they'd had 23,000 people displaced from their homes. They've had over 585 homes that have been lost, 9,000 structures endangered. Those people have been evacuated because uh, their homes may be in the way of the wildfire. There is some progress in the last day or so. They only had 10% of the fires contained Yesterday, that's now gone up to 30%. And I have to say, when I look at this, what we're trying to do here at InfoWars is we're trying to warn people of the impending disasters coming our way. Whether it's the flash floods that we saw this week in Utah, whether it's the massive wildfires that are going on in the Pacific uh, West, we are trying to warn people. Help us to warn people, stand with us to warn people that these disasters are coming. And what we're trying to tell them, too, is it's not a natural disaster. It's not even incompetence. We have our political leaders who are going around lighting these fires, literally. That's what they're doing in Syria. They're pushing us to a state of war with Russia. They want a nuclear war. They want a world war. They are displacing these uh, Syrian refugees. And then what do they do? They're going to come on tonight on these debates like a bunch of arsonists who've been setting this fire, pretending that they're firefighters. They're not. They're psychopaths. Joining us now to uh, join and tell us about an alternative, something you can do to work for peace, work for the issue of peace, is Gerald Salenti. He's got the Occupy uh, Peace uh, meeting that's going to begin this weekend. We're going to let him give us the details about that. Gerald Salenti of TrendsJournal.com. Gerald, welcome. Oh, thanks for having me on, David. You really summed up things well. They're psychopaths, and nobody wants to call them what they are. Yes. And to me, and I don't say this sarcastically, anyone that supports the Republicans and the Democrats are supporters of murderers and thieves. How many more people, when the Republicans are in, they're slaughtering people in Iraq under the name of, you remember, Saddam Hussein has weapons of mass destruction and ties to al-Qaeda. And of course, he didn't. How many people have, has the United States killed over there? Depending on who you read, eh, a million. They destroy the place. How about Afghanistan? So they're murderers, always in the name of bringing freedom and democracy. And on the other side of the murderers are the Democrats. They got a different line. They got a new rap. We're going to make it sound nice because we're Democrats. It's a humanitarian mission, I tell you. Well, Gaddafi has to go. Why, look what he's doing to his people. We can't stand back and let that happen. Hey, remember just about a year ago, you saw um, 
Obama, take the stage. We've got to save them Yazidis on the mountain. Don't worry about it. No troops on the ground. And now you're reporting, as it's just coming out today, we now have troops in Syria. But let's really be stupid. Let's swallow a lot of garbage that they love to feed us that they've been doing since, what, the Vietnam War. These aren't troops. They is advisors. Yeah, exactly. They're advisors. Yeah, they're special advisors. You know, there's another article, Gerald, that uh, I didn't go over. And, of course, that announcement uh, didn't just come from our research. That's mainstream media, so now we can all believe it, right? That came out of CNBC. That was a breaking tweet that came out earlier. Defense officials tell NBC News that U.S. special ops forces are on the ground in Syria assisting Kurdish forces in the fight against ISIS. Of course, we've been reporting this for years, and we have verification of that as well. We have other stories that are breaking today. This one talking about Chechens in 2012 being escorted across the border by people who were with the West, who were training these people. And of course, Chechens are the ones who have been, the Muslims who have been fighting the Russians. So what do we do? We go get our own Muslims and use them as proxies against the Russians and then say that we need to protect everyone against that. I want to get your comments on that. I want to let everybody know the number where they can call in to make a donation for our money bomb. Of course, that's why we're doing this 28-hour broadcast. You can call into our store operators at 888-253-3139. That's 888-253-3139. Two five three three one three nine, and right now we've got uh, Rob Dew and Leanne McAdoo over there answering phones. From what I understand, we also have specials at our store. We have a each hour we're going to be offering a particular product off for a special. We have some specials that are going to be running the entire twenty eight hours. This hour we have twenty percent off of Prostigar, the hour of five to six. While I'm here with Gerald Salenti. And again, we have free shipping for the entire Money Bomb. This is a great time for you to stock up. We've got 20% off Survival Shield X2, 20% off Super Male Vitality, 20% off a of Brain Force, 20% off a of Silver Bullet, 15% off each of Deep Cleanse, Secret 12, Oxy Powder. So we got some great prices. Those are discounts over and above free shipping. And if you really want to help us, call up and just give us a donation for this special Money Bomb. This is why we're running this 20 hour, 28 hour. Uh, Marathon, we're trying to get the money to move to satellites so we can increase our reach. We're trying to warn more people about what's going on. And Gerald, tell us about what you're doing this weekend with Occupy Peace. People can go to OccupyPeace.us. They can read about it there. But tell us what's going on. Tell us the purpose of it. Tell us some of the people that are going to be there. Let me start with the purpose. You know, I was watching Fox News today, and it was a disgrace. All of these people shooting off their fat mouths, men and women, Assad has to go. Yeah. Assad has to go. Who made this stuff up? It's the 20 minutes of hate that we see from Orwell, right? <laughs> it is. Yeah. And, and, and when did this start to happen that it becomes just, you know, a, a natural way of behaving, saying that what has to happen in another country? Who are these people to say Assad has to go? They know nothing about nothing. All they do, it, they could feed them into the other, what you were saying, they're psychopaths. Yes. They're, they're, they're buying the BS and they're hawking it as war. Because here's the deal. Syria was a very educated and quite prosperous nation until 2011, when Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, Susan Rice, Samantha Powers decided Assad has to go. Oh, he's not treating his people right. Who are we to say what other countries should do? They did it with Gaddafi. Yes. We're and look what we've got the there. Look what we got at Benghazi. And, and now it's become a breeding ground for jihadis. But of course, that was by design, wasn't it, Gerald? Well, again, you know, would they be have invaded Libya? if their major export was broccoli and they weren't sitting <laughs> on the most valuable sweet crude on the planet. And a massive water reservoir as well. They have an incredibly large freshwater reservoir under Libya that's probably in the long run going to be more valuable than their oil reserves. And so now they've destabilized that entire area. You were talking about refugees before. When Gaddafi was in, no refugees were leaving. 
He had cut a deal with Berlusconi of Italy. So now they're flooding out of all the regions that have been destabilized by the United States and nobody's talking about. The United States and its coalition of the killing, which include, of course, the Arab League. And so going back to why we're doing this, we are on the verge of the first great war of the 21st century. You noted today that, yes, there are boots on the ground in Syria. The way I read it, by the way, was looking at economic news, and it was a Reuters story about oil. And that in that story, they mentioned that the CENTCOM guy, you know, whatever his name is, you know, mm -hmm. general this or that, said that we have troops there training the Kurdish people, you know, to overthrow the Islamic fundamentalists in Syria. What are we doing there? Yes. And here's the point. I want to make this really clear. They have all of these strategies to win. Let's clear the deck over here. Show me one victory. Mm -hmm. One. One. What are we in Afghanistan now? The longest war in American history by a long shot. Yes. Iraq. Total disaster. Libya. Disaster. And then you go back, well, we could have went bid Vietnam. We only killed three million people over there. And we didn't drop enough Agent Orange on them. They held us back. The military has not had one victory. I've had it. I've had it with this continual murderous streak of madmen and little crazy people in Congress sending our people to war, slaughtering innocent people and tearing up the Constitution to do what they want to fulfill whatever sick dream they ever have in their heads. That's why we're launching OccupyPeace.us for us. And here is the difference. This is like no other peace movement before. We have a strategy for peace. It's not about, oh, you know, peace and love and let's ohm and pray. Yeah, that's nice. But it eh, doesn't work, has it? So here's the strategy. Number one, honor thy founding fathers. We are here in colonial Kingston, New York. We're holding this rally. We're closing down the streets at the most historic four corners. The, pro the mayor here, Mayor Gallo, has given us permission to do it. He supports it. He believes in building communities, not nations. So step number one in honoring the founding fathers from where the seeds of democracy were sown, where 90% of America's constitution was written at the location right here when they wrote the New York State Constitution when Kingston was the first capital, every one of them, beginning with George Washington, a real commander in chief, a fighter, led the troops, a warrior, not these little boys with a bad attitude that shoot pool, play basketball, go for a couple of rounds of golf and drive pickup trucks and call themselves commanders in chief. This is a real man. His farewell address, no foreign entanglements. Madison, Jefferson, Adams, Franklin, every one of the founding fathers. So now, David, when I say that, the first stupid moronic reaction I get from dimwits is, well, it's a different world now. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, it is. Yeah, different world. They were at war back then big time. Anybody mm -hmm. ever hear France and England going at it? Hey, how about that wonderful march from Napoleon to Moscow with 425,000 men and coming back with 10,000? The only thing that's changed are the means of delivering the weaponry. Yes. But the madness of war was as mad then as it is now. But the founding fathers said, no foreign entanglements. So step one of Occupy Peace, close all the bases overseas. In what, 150 countries? Some 11, 1,200 locations? Bring home the troops, secure the homeland. And when they're here... Instead of building highways in Afghanistan, the military industrial contractors, 
refurbish our rotted third world infrastructure. So a 